Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is Neil Price. He is the voice of the Mississippi State Bulldogs for football and basketball. Neil, welcome to the program. Thanks, guys. It's great to have you on. Uh, first off, let's dress the cowbell. Uh, it's a known commodity in college football, a tradition unlike any other, a compromise between tradition and the SEC years ago. I've watched a few games on TV, and I, I hear it a lot. What, what's the tradition? When can it be used? When can it be used? What's the lowdown? Well, I'm only about three months into this, so I don't know the exact year that it started, but the legend is that there was an alumni, or not alumni, there was a student faculty football game, so a long time ago, because those don't happen very often anymore. <laughs> and, um, and this was before the stadium was built. It was on the very same field that the game will take place on tomorrow, in Scott Field, but in the midst of that game, a cow just happened to wander across the field, and it had a bell attached to its neck, as was customary at the time, and Everybody just kind of got a kick out of it. So kids started bringing cowbells to games because it was an ag school. And from there, everything just kind of kind of kept growing and growing. And we'll have 60-some thousand of them in there tomorrow. <laughs> it is a staple in what uh, Mississippi State is known for. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, the cowbell can't, cannot be uh, uh, cowbelled or shaken during a play. It kind of ends before the play. Am I right on that? It's called ring responsibly. So the, the cowbell, the cowbell can be rang while the teams are in the huddle. It can be rang right up until the time that the quarterback moves under center or gets into formation. Very shotgun. If they're in the formation, they've got the hands ready to go. Obviously, in the cowbell when the team comes to the line. That's the easiest way to describe it. So when the team some... comes to the line, the cowbell has to stop, and they're pretty good at it. They're, they really. And it's the strangest thing because you, you won't be able to hear yourself think. And then as soon as the quarterback walks to the line, dead silence when State has the ball and folks will just start yelling as loud as they can when BYU's got it. So it, it, it's a coordinated effort. Yeah, this is some serious rules and etiquette regarding the cowbell. Cowbell decorum. It very, that, is, that is a perfect phrase for that. So beyond just the cowbell, when you look at this Mississippi, Mississippi State team, what do you view as the strength of this team this season? Well, you know, I think it's a tough question to answer right now. But, you know, the best answer may be we don't really know at this point because first two games, three games of the year, up until the end of that game with LSU, I think you would have said it's their run game on offense, and then clearly their defense had played very, very well under a new defensive coordinator. Now, two games later – at the back end of the stretch against three top 15 ranked teams, defense has been burned a little bit. Uh, it's been harder to run the ball, and you don't know if those two things are maybe where you thought they were early in the year. So I'm interested to see tomorrow if they've made improvements in those areas against a, a big physical team. And if they have, then, then maybe those things do indeed bear out to be what we thought they were. But but right now, I think all that, the strength of the team, that's still very much a topic of discussion and still something I think that's a bit of an unknown. Neil Price, the voice of the Mississippi State Bulldogs, is on BYU Sports Nation. BYU comes into this game 1-5. Uh, and five. What, have, what are your thoughts on the Cougars so far this year? Well, you know, I watched them play Boise State last Friday, and I think that they're a much better team than 1-5. and five. I'll tell you that. Uh, they, they have the physical tools to be a really good team. You know, you got different types of running backs. Uh, you know, I think Canada is, is kind of the quick guy. Uh, you know, then you've got obviously some guys who can come in there and run with power. Uh, Matt Bushman, I think, is going to turn into a fantastic tight end by the time his career is done. I mean, to be a freshman and uh, to be able to, to demonstrate the hands that, that he demonstrated on some of those catches against Boise, and the fact that he's just so versatile. You know, they, I don't think they lined him up in the same place twice in the first half. He moved around a lot. So, uh, you know, that they, they've, got, they've got some skilled people that can help. As, as Tanner Mangum gets healthier, he will be much better. And I thought he threw the ball with a lot of confidence uh, against Boise. You know, strong arm, knew where he wanted to go with it, didn't always work out. But, but I was impressed with his confidence. Uh, and then, you know, on defense, 
every time Fred Warner hit somebody, the ball came loose. You know, I mean, he, he runs downhill. Uh, I, I really enjoy watching him play. And Kafusi's just as big as some of those mountains you guys have got out there when you look at him. <laughs> I mean, 6'9", 285, whatever. He's going to be a load up front uh, for State's offensive line. So the tools are there. It's just a matter of everybody being healthy and clicking again. So uh, it, it's going to be a good game tomorrow. It's going to be a great test for Mississippi State. And I think BYU will be one of, if not maybe the biggest offensive and defensive front they face. Speaking of uh, enjoying watching certain players play, I think uh, Nick Fitzgerald falls into that category. Where is he at in his development as a QB? Well, he's getting better. And, you know, you look at the numbers, and especially coming off these last three games against the top 15 ranked teams, he's thrown he's thrown a share of interceptions. And not all of them have been his fault. He's had some deflections that have turned into picks, um, you know, that, that kind of are a little misleading, I think. But what everyone has told me, and again, I didn't see him play more than just one game a year ago because I'm so new into it, but what everyone's told me is he has a much better understanding of the whys with regard to offense now. Why do you make this read? Why do you throw here in this situation? And it's not just simply take the snap, make three reads, and then just throw it wherever you think you should go or try to use your arm to beat somebody. So the cerebral part of it, the mental part of it, I think he's taken some big steps. Uh, The thing that's so impressive about him is for his size, you know, he's built like a wide receiver or a tight end more than a quarterback. And he, he is deceptively fast, I think, for that size and, you know, uses his legs well doesn't try to overdo that. Um, you know, it, it's not like he, he, he wants to hit the eject button quickly. Uh, he's pretty patient with that part. But, uh, you know, I've, I've been impressed with just his decision-making, his poise, um, and, and just the confidence that he has. You know, when you're playing that position, you, you've got to be confident. You know, I mean, and, and he certainly doesn't lack that. So, he needs his receivers to win some one-on-ones for him. If they can do more of that and find ways to win those battles, and they had a tough time doing that against uh, against uh, certainly Georgia and, and Auburn on the road. He's had some guys out in the receiver core that are, are big playmakers that you know they'll get back a little. I think tomorrow. I don't know that they'll play you know, like they were playing the first three games, um, but you know as you get those guys back and if they can win some one-on-ones for him, I think you'll see the numbers improve. Cougar fans will descend upon uh, Stark Vegas, affectionately uh, really known as Starkville, uh, Mississippi, uh, tomorrow. You're, you're new to the area as well, but what do Cougar fans need to see and where do they need to eat tomorrow or today? Well, I think, uh, I think they need to make it to downtown. You know, Starkville is Starkville's a town of about 29,000 when school's not in, and it doubles in size during the school year. Um, so... If you just stick around campus, you're going to see some neat stuff. It's a beautiful campus. It's worth taking some time to walk around and see. Uh, but if you get into downtown, I think you'll get a little bit more of, of the culture of it. And uh, there's some good restaurants you'll find along University slash Main Street that are worth checking out, too. If, if you're breakfast folks, I would strongly encourage you to make it to the Starkville Cafe. Go early because it's not a very big place, and uh, there's usually a line on game weekends, a long wait, but it's worth your time. Um, if you're looking for a good lunch or dinner spot, uh, Harvey's is on Highway 12. It never disappoints. The veranda is a great place. It's over near the stadium, uh, right off the south end of campus. Uh, it, it is it is world class uh, to be in a town of 29,000 people. Those folks do a fantastic job. So I would throw those three out um, just as places. If you're looking for a good meal and a place you can sit and enjoy and and, and talk with one another. They all rank right up there at the top of the list in Starkville. And, uh, and, you know, yeah, walk around downtown, walk through the Cotton District uh, off University Drive, take in some of the culture there. Um, that's kind of the, the, the Cotton District's kind of the student hangout uh, on the weekends. And uh, there's a lot of stuff always going on. Uh, some small restaurants down there uh, and places you can go kick back and relax. Um and just kind of get the feel of, of being in a college town. And that's what it is. I mean, it's a, it is a true Southern college town. And, you know, I came here from a town of 300,000 people and in another SEC city, and I have absolutely loved it. 
in the three months that I've been here. And I hope the folks from Provo and, and other points in Utah and everywhere else coming in that have never been here, I hope they'll fall in love with it and have a great experience too. Well, great insights, Neil. We appreciate the time. Have a great call tomorrow, and uh, thanks for joining us. All right, guys. Thank you.